Right, thank you very much, everybody. Um, <clears throat> I've talked a lot today about Hadrian's Wall, and um, one of the issues that we had, um, Hadrian's Wall is the largest World Heritage Site in Britain, and we think it's the greatest World Heritage Site in Britain. It stretches for um, about 180 kilometers. It has uh, 12 major Roman forts and many, many small forts and mile castles along the way. But we know, even British people, didn't know how big the wall was. And we wanted to really, really think about how we could engage the people um, of Britain with Hadrian's Wall. So this is the wall. You can see um, some of its great length here in the middle. And then you have some examples of um, small uh, temples and forts and some major forts, which are very regularly spaced all the way across the wall. And you can walk the wall from one end to the other, or you can cycle it. So we decided two years ago in March that we would try and illuminate Hadrian's Wall from one end to the other. And this is where our, our lessons in life really began. Um, we didn't know in the beginning how we were going to make this happen. We didn't know what the mechanism was to make this happen. But we decided eventually that we would put 500 beacons or lights regularly spaced. Every, 200 and, uh, every 500 meters across the wall, we would have a, a light. So who was going to carry these lights? How were we going to get all of these lights in place across such a long, um, a long, long distance? And this is where, um, for someone who works with culture or heritage, this is a really important point. We decided, because we only are a small team, um, at that time we had 17 people and some people helping us with production, we needed at least 500 people to come and help us make this um, piece of um, art installation happen. So we put a call out in the press, in the media, um, we asked for people to come and to help us on the day to illuminate Hadrian's Wall. And this is where um, we were completely and utterly overwhelmed. Within six hours of the press release going out, we had um, our 500 volunteers already decided that they would come and help us. Um, by two weeks later, we had over 4,000 people who had contacted us from all over the world to say they wanted to come and help illuminate Hadrian's Wall. So we thought, well, we can double 500 to 1,000, but we have to move these people around. So that was as many as we could take. So how did we choose the people? We asked them to write a story, a short reason, of why Hadrian's Wall was important to them. And we've got um, just three of the 1,100 stories we had in the end here. We have someone from Italy, because I come from Italy, and Hadrian's Wall is a wonderful reminder of how great the Roman Empire was. I have studies in Latin and Roman history, and this is a wonderful event I wish not to miss. I'm, this one is from a local person in Newcastle. I'm so very fond of the wall. I find it a great place of beauty and relaxation. It's a joy to have such a historic, meaningful landmark so close to home. I would love to be part of this celebration. And then from Scotland, this kind of summed up what a lot of people said. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity to be part of an extraordinary event. Through a spectacular visual display, the public's imagination will be captured. Not only will this provide a visual spectacle, but will help inform people on the role the wall played in antiquity in our history. While it is a dominant feature of the landscape today, there is little sense of the scale and how the wall would have functioned. By bringing this visual spectacle to local people, it is celebrating what the wall means to people today and the past. So we chose our people. We had lots of people who had proposed marriage, who had got engaged, who had visited the wall with their grandfather, etc. And we then set to making the event happen. The event happened for one hour only on the 10th of March in 2010. 
We made the wall start at the eastern end of Hadrian's Wall in Wall's End, and we gradually, one by one, as each light, um, as each group of people with a beacon saw the light before them, they lit their own beacon, and the light travelled across the wall for for one hour, and. During that hour, over one, uh, 50,000 people came to many parts of the wall and to each end of the wall to participate. And I can only tell you, because I was part of this um, crowd here, I might be the one with the red top on in the bottom, that the atmosphere was electric. And I couldn't believe just how many people um, this was so important too. So we had volunteers who paid themselves to fly from Australia, from Canada, from Belgium, from Italy, to come and participate in this event. And for us, it was an amazing opportunity to really feel the power of our history. And this is what it's all about. It's about the people. This was the atmosphere on the day. It was absolute excitement and joy. And the word that really summed up um, how everybody felt, it was as though we had honoured Hadrian's Wall. We had given it the honour it deserved from our history. But how do we use that today? I told people earlier we have been putting new interpretation into the museums across Hadrian's Wall. There are 12 major museums. This particular museum had no, in Carlisle, in the west of the wall, it had no evidence of its Roman history. And Carlisle was the place that the Romans administered the whole Roman frontier from. And today we have this beautiful, peaceful landscape where people come together, as you saw in the previous picture. And what we decided to do in this gallery was to really challenge people's thinking. How do we use the past? and problems of the past and issues of the past and relate them to what is happening in the world today. So we decided we would rebuild a frontier like we see many countries building in the world today. We had it in Berlin, we have it in Palestine and Israel, in between South and North Korea and many, many other places. So this is the recreation of one of those modern frontiers. So Hadrian was the first to build a wall 80 miles long to separate the Romans from the barbarians, who were the Scots at the time, and we're still building them now. So this is the gallery which tells you more about the story of um, the Roman history. Um, it, this information, this antiquities, are next to this very modern recreation of a frontier today. And what we are going to do on the 31st of August is we have a new arts installation and I would love it if everybody could participate in this. We are going to um, place a series of weather balloons across Hadrian's Wall. We know how much interest and how many volunteers we can have to help us. But really importantly, what we are going to do this time with digital media is um, we are going to invite people all over the world to come online to use their smartphones, their laptops, their iPads and be part of this whole um, installation. We want people to tell us what their ideas of borders and frontiers are today. What does it mean today for you to, um, to live with a border or a frontier? Not necessarily a physical one, it can be an emotional border or frontier, it can be something um, in your mind, but please tell us what these ideas are. And those ideas will be gathered together and digitally we will pass messages across the wall from one side to the other and the weather balloons will change colour. And what we hope is that we can create a worldwide conversation about the meaning of frontiers today and also encourage people to think about how these frontiers and barriers can change over time. They can become less and less and we can all begin to share and you can end up with a situation where you have um, total peace as you do with Hadrian's Wall today. So um, that's our big idea. It's the people, your audience, it's their excitement and their passion that help you really realize your ambitions. 
And for us, we want the world to know um, about Hadrian's Wall and to really honor this magnificent piece of engineering that um, the Romans put in place across the north of England. So this was just a small part of the illuminating of the wall from two years ago in the town of Carlisle, where nearly 12,000 people came to share in the celebration. They walked with torches to meet the light arriving in the city from the northeast of the country. So um, for us, it's been a great opportunity to really talk about Hadrian's Wall. But all that really matters is those people and how they feel about that experience. Thank you very much.